The weather is awesome. Football season is among us. And we ready to talk some Georgia football. Let's go. So what's the good word, YouTube? It's your boy, One Dog. Here to talk about some Georgia football. Big game today. Huge game. Game of the year. Hell, game of the century for us. Every time we play Alabama, because the last times we, last few times we played them, since 2012, we just haven't, haven't been able to get it done. We beat them in the first half, can't take care of them in the second half. So all the people who jumped on the CKS and University of Georgia bandwagon, and all of the diehard fans out there, the hype is starting to die down, even though we're getting those top recruiting classes because people are waiting for us to turn that corner. And turn that corner involves beating Alabama. That's all there is to it. And I'm tired of all the talk, tired of all the interview clips, I'm tired of all the smack talk. It just comes down to a point when you have to start playing football. In Georgia, we're out of excuses. You got to beat them. It don't matter. I don't care if Nick Saban was going to be there or wasn't going to be there due to COVID, which I don't wish injury or sickness upon anybody regardless of who they are but if he's gonna be there looks like it and so we need to take care of business but regardless if he was if he wasn't we need to take care of business we got to get this w and i don't care about paul feinbaum talking about it doesn't really matter right now it matters to us it matters to the university of georgia because everywhere everywhere around the world people are talking about us and we just can't beat bama and it's becoming to a point where some of the fans is, is comical to them to the Alabama fans. I'm tired of the detergents. I'm tired of these detergents talking all this crap. Every time we get ready to play university, they get ready to play University of Georgia. It's really getting old. And the reason why people respect the detergents as much as they do is because of the legend that they've built up. They've won those games where people were questioning, eh, are they back yet? When Nick Saban was first starting up, they won all those games. They're only... Um, team that really comes up and punches them in the mouth is Clemson. So people get ready for that national championship and they look for that matchup every year. But I'm tired of that matchup too. We need to throw our hat in the ring. So that means we need to take care of business when it comes down to playing Alabama. We need to play both halves of the game. Because we win the first half, we have since 2012 and then we lose in the second half. I'm still looking for that safety. I forgot his name. He probably bagging groceries somewhere. They got faked out in the national championship by a freshman. A senior safety. You can't believe it. That still hurts to this day. But either way, let's talk about the University of Georgia Alabama game going on right now. Everybody in game day picked against Georgia, except for Kirk Herb Street and Bear, which is no surprise. And Derrick Henry was the guest. Everybody know if you're a Georgia fan, hi. What could have been? Derrick Henry was recruited, was committed when Mark Rick was at Georgia and he had a change of heart and the quote that he said when he had his change of heart still sticks in my craw to this day but the quote has become true he said the reason he went to why he go switch from Georgia to the University of Alabama is because he wanted to win and they have so I can't fault them on this quote it came true I just wish we had opportunity to, to ring them in, but you know, you got to win those games. You got to impress those recruits. You can't keep talking to them all the time. You got to show it on the field. So we got to beat the big dogs. And I think Georgia has it to take care of Alabama this year. I think we've had it for the last few games we played them. It's just about coaching and being able to call the right plays and make the right decisions in situations, which Nick Saban is a legend at. And that's how he's built this bigger than life persona. And every time everybody thinks about Bama, you think about the crystal and all the things they won is almost like they beat you before they even stepped on the field. But you gotta get over that. They just they're just guys like anybody else, just a football team like anybody else. They're a talented, tough football team, but you gotta take it to them, you gotta step up and be a man and just stand your ground. You gotta punch them in the face. And keep on punching them to the rest throughout the game until you get that W. You can't give up. I don't care how what the score looks like. You can't give up because Alabama doesn't stop because they're relentless. So everybody who plays against them needs to be relentless, relentless as well. And that's what University of Georgia needs to do. We need to be relentless. Our defense versus their offense. Their wide receivers are incredible. 
sometimes our defense just the, the middle opens up because I know our front seven gets pressure on the quarterback and all that. But I really want we need to get more sacks. I think we need to get them down on the ground because if you give a quarterback that has talent and they have super talented weapons around them, sometimes pressure is not enough. You need to get them on the ground. Let them feel you. So they would be in the back of the head. So they would start making them throw the ball a little quicker, maybe airing it up, throwing it over the top of the receiver, being inaccurate. So we need to try to do some more of that. I wish we, we can almost get to them. With some, we, we have some sex, uh, even better than I remember in the past few years. But sometimes we do all the blitz and everything, and we just can't get to them. And they step out, step around, and be able to complete the play. Can't do that today against um, the detergents. Not with uh, Waddle out there in the slack. It was crazy because you, you break contain and the quarterback bear to roll out and the play is broken and he's just running free. That's a lot to ask for your secondary to cover all those wide receivers, especially with Waddle speed and be able to stop them from catching the ball and making a big play. So that's the thing we need to think about. Um, I think that our front seven against the offensive line matches up pretty well. Um, with our linebackers giving us an extra edge because I think our linebackers are very good tackling in space. They're, we're pretty fast side to side. And we're the top rush um, defense in the nation. But to not have a star, like people they always point to Moses on Alabama, we have various stars on our defense. Everybody is over there is highly touted on our defensive side of the ball. And they all play together well as a unit. Our offense, well, the offense line have gone through some changes. We've done some philosophy changes on offense. But our main focus is still to run the ball, and I think we can do that. Uh, we need to get Cook out in space because Cook is not a between the tackles running back at all. Zeus is, but Zeus needs to. I like his head down, power through everybody mentality, but. He got to find the hole a little bit better um, instead of just trying to run straight forward and pound through everybody. Um, that's good on the goal line, but not when we're on our own 20, on our own side of the um, field trying to get the first down. McIntosh looks really good, and our freshman running back from California looks real good, in my opinion, for the limited time that we've seen them. And McIntosh can catch the ball, so... Uh, I think we have like a Sony Michelle 2.0 coming through there with McIntosh, as well as our other running backs. Uh, Stetson Bennett, and I know people question us, will we be able to win with Stetson Bennett? Will he be able to do this or that? And people must not remember when we had Joe Cox or Tarashinsky. And those years were, uh, they were pretty, uh, they were pretty painful. And Stetson Bennett is far better than any of those guys we had in our lean quarterback years. And I like his confidence. You got to give him a nod to when he knows the, he's he's a veteran quarterback. He's been, he's he's paid his dues. He's gone through junior college. He's been people at University of Georgia. Our, our own coaches have told him that it was likely that he wasn't going to play. But sometimes things just, you know, work their way out and it becomes a path for you. Uh, Newman opted out for I still don't know what was the deal with that and then Dewan uh, which is a great story uh, so proud of the kid for battling through everything he's battled through but he just wasn't ready for that moment then Stetson got his chance and just like Tom Brady said once you get your chance don't fuck it up and Stetson Bennett hasn't fucked it up he's been delivering the mail the mail man so has all the steps have been, I think we're in good hands with him running our offense. But we're going to see because Alabama is a true test because of the talent. The detergents have talent all over the field um, besides probably the kicker. But that's neither here nor there. We're not worried about the kicker. We're worried about trying to put points on the board and stopping, those, stopping that powerful um, run game and those wide receivers from getting open. That's what we need to worry about. The Alabama D has only forced three three and outs out of 34 tries this year. And you know when everybody plays Bama, they give them their best shot. But this isn't a Bama defense that anybody in the nation is used to. And um, they only have three three and outs out of 34 tries. 
and we're pretty good on third down converting. Uh, I think we have the edge there, so it gives me confidence leading into the game. And we've outscored our opponent 62 to 6 in the second half this year, which we haven't played well in the second half against University of Alabama at all in the last few times we played them. And then besides those games, we've been blown out, just blown off the field. Still remember the Julio Jones game. Still remember the uh, the Calvin Ripley game. It's just it's just ridiculous. Only thing I would do if I was a coach on the University of Georgia staff, I would watch those the last few games that we beat them in the first half, and then beat them in the second half, and I just make the players watch it over and over again until they get to a fever pitch, and you just get tired of it. You just so focused on getting this win and putting all of this negativity behind you and people either mocking you or laughing you or laughing at you or whatever. And it's just time to play ball. That's all it comes down to. Stepping up and playing ball. And the Bama offense, I mean, it's no slouch. I mean, it's Bama. And they average 51 points per game this year. So, you know, it's going to be a big challenge. Bama offense versus our defense. So, we're going to see who's going to come out on top. I believe we will, of course, I'm a University of Georgia fan. But we're going to see. Because the talent is there. I think we're just as talented as the detergents. And it's all about what you do with your talent. You know, the situations you put them in and how you mold them and prepare them and get their minds focused for the game. And that's what's saving this king. And everybody else, especially his assistants who haven't beaten him yet, are trying to reach that same level. It comes with experience. You can't get experience from drawing up plays and or uh, doing simulations or through practice, whatever. You have to get out there and you have to go earn your stripes out there during game day. You know, iron sharpens iron. So that's the only thing you can do. And that's what Nick Saban has gone through. He's got more experience. So there's just got to come. But when you get your opportunity, you got to seize it. You got to hold it. And that's what Curry Smart has to do. We got to finish it off. We got to finish off the game. That's all it is to it. And not only am I a Georgia fan, I'm a Georgia sports fan. So, you know, Georgia got all of our hopes up high. We're looking for a national championship, hopefully. Because the Braves, the Braves, we got a great young team going out into the, uh, the next few years. I look forward to watching how they progress and how they play. But we three two lead on the Dodgers right now. I'm just like we just need one more win, just to make it to the World Series. That would be big for the team, just to make it to the World Series, because the Braves haven't um, been to the NLCS since 1999, and we're there now. We have a lead. We can all we need one more game to win, make it to the World Series. That'd be big for this organization just to get back there. Of course, we want to win it, but just to get back there is big. It's big for the psyche. Uh, the Hawks is a is a continuing process. We've got a lot of young talent there. We make the playoffs. That would be great. The Falcons, uh, we know what's, what's up with the Falcons. So, there ain't much to say about the Falcons. 0-5, my well be 0-16. See if we can get a top draft pick. But even with the top draft picks, well, at least Dimitrov is gone. So, our top draft picks we've been picking haven't really worked out for us. They may do one contract and they're gone or even they might be gone even before then they just haven't materialized until whatever our front office has been seeing in their um, tape when we draft those people besides Julio Jones and uh, when we got Matt Ryan not many of our first round draft picks have really done anything for us and on the reason why we didn't mess up the Riley Ridley draft pick because he kind of fell in our lap nobody else picked him and it was just too good to be true so you had to take him so that was just God intervening right there and saying here you go here's the pick that you're not going to mess up because I'm going to give it to you but if Arthur Blank won the one the championship with Atlanta United I don't know what the um, poor man would be doing because of where the Falcons collapsed at least he got that to hang his hat on so you know shout out to Atlanta United they had to sell out for the first two years first two or three years that they become an organization and won it in the second year. That's crazy. We need that kind of uh, excitement and achievement level in all of our programs. But anyway, man, I'm not going to hold y'all up. You know, it's a beautiful day. Get out there, enjoy it, especially if you're in Georgia, around my area. The fall weather is nothing like it. Get ready for some 
High Stakes Football tonight. Enjoy your Saturday. 